Hi everyone and welcome to the second part of these videos. My name is Mathieu and in the first part we've made some forged carbon fiber parts. So it's a ring holder made out of polyurethane and some chopped fibers, so chopped carbon fibers. Um, in the first part we've made a silicon mold out of a 3D print just to go quickly through iterations, make sure that the mold is working. Um, and then we've tried to use the first mold with some success at the end, but we went through a lot of trial and error, like you can see here. So sometimes the resin wasn't fully saturating all the fibers, but then in this video, we'll take it to a more professional way. So we'll be casting some new molds, stronger molds. I'll take you through some experiments and then we'll finish with some good results coming out of these molds. We'll have to do a little bit of patching and uh, filling pinholes, but I'll make a separate video about that coming soon as well, um, very soon. So if during this video you think I like this thing uh, or these projects, make sure to follow me on Instagram, subscribe for more videos. I'm proud to announce I have a new video coming up about Forged with some very good results um, coming later on this channel as well. Uh, so here you can see some parts. So these are motorcycle parts and then we can start with this video. So the main goals we had in the previous video is to make it cheap and fast. Um, we don't want to waste too much time on these first prototypes. Um, we were able to go through some various iterations. We've made sure that we have uh, a backup with the silicon mold if things go wrong. For example, your polyurethane part sticking into the part or breaking the part. And now we'll go through some next goals. So we want to make consistent results and we make it fast and easy. Uh, sometimes you'll still have to do some fine tuning. It's, po it's possible that this entire project needs a V2 with all the things that we've learned in uh, these tutorials. Um, but so far I'm happy with, with the first testings and the results we're getting at the end of this video. So we've casted an aluminium epoxy mold as well. So the advantage is, is that it's stronger and it's resistant to higher temperatures. So maybe at some points we might add some extra uh, temperature to make better results, make the resin more runny or uh, make some fast curing parts. So that's the reason it was casted in um, aluminium filled epoxy as well. So from the previous video, we've learned that the best way is to mix the fibers with the resin and then put it in and compress everything. I didn't put a lot of attention to these little venting holes that were put into the mold. So I'll try to explain you a bit more what the importance of this. So here you can see two plastic bottles. So it's a little demo I tried for myself. Um, it's a cool little experiment. So one bottle has some holes drilled in the bottom. And then if you want to inflate a balloon into a plastic bottle that is closed, um, there will be like an equilibrium between the air that is still stuck into the part and the balloon. So I'm using my pressure from my lungs and so I'm not able to push it any further. If you would use a compressor, you might even be able to break the bottle or to make it explode. If you have the holes, we are able to blow the balloon a bit further um, till the point that the balloon is not stretching anymore. And this is also a fact that you notice when opening and closing cups, uh, for example, on this, this Bondo, uh, it's that it's difficult to put the lid on because the air pressure is having a counter um, pressure uh, closing the lid. So we've closed the mold now, we let the resin drip out and then here is another experiment with vacuum just to show you um, like the difference in vacuum. So you can also blow up things with vacuum. Um, if you would put an astronaut into the vacuum chamber, uh, his um, sweat would boil his lung would collapse. Uh, but if you want to reproduce an experiment in a vacuum chamber, uh, try putting a marshmallow in it. It will also expand a lot bef uh, because of the difference in pressure, atmos atmospheric pressure and the vacuum that we have in the vacuum chamber. So just to show you a bit better, you can remove the pressure from the bottle as well. And then the balloon will also uh, expand. So two ways of expanding things under vacuum. Um, just a cool thing to keep in mind, maybe for some other projects, I have some ideas. If you have some ideas too, leave it in the comments and I can try it out for some future projects. So once everything is cured, we're demolding the part, we're expecting some good results. Two reasons, we're using epoxy resin now, so it has a slower set time, uh, so it can saturate the fibers uh, for a longer time. 
So this was with some infusion resin. Uh, so it's very runny, so it's not very viscous. And so we're able to put it for a longer time. The downside is longer uh, molding time. So the part is stuck into the mold a bit longer. And that was what we solved in the first video. So we have a fast and easy way now to make the parts. Um, now the next goal would be to have some consistent results. That's mostly the most difficult thing. But once you get the right mixture of your fibers and the resin, you can just reproduce your parts. So here is the part coming out. I'm pretty happy so far. You can also see the resin is more clear. You can see the fibers better. And that's because the polyurethane has a milky color. I've added some graphite powder to make it darker just for a visual aspect. Uh, but here you can see it's fully see-through. Uh, of the resin being filled with the fibers. So the look is better on these parts, but it might also be a personal preference. Um, and here is the second part. So now we confirmed the consistent result. In theory, I think you should make three or more parts, uh, fine tune a bit more on the resin to fiber ratio. Just to let you know, I'm at one third of fiber in weight with two parts of uh, resin now. Uh, mainly the most of the resin is pushed out of the mold while being compressed or closed, uh, leaving a ratio I think about 35 fiber, 65 of resin. So we had some pinholes. I'll make a full video that will be uploaded soon about fixing pinholes. So here's just a fast recap. So I spray painted the parts, sanded them, then you can spray paint again till you get some good results. Here you can see it's in between the stages. And then you can finish everything by a last layer of clear coat to get the parts that we're having at the end. So this will be explained, I think it's a five minute video, how you can fix it quickly. So it's not for big repairs, it's just for small pinholes. And it's not a shame to have pinholes in your parts. It's pretty common, but mostly it can be fixed um, in a good way as well. So it was done on a speed shape I did in a previous tutorial. I think it's two years ago or even more. And here you can see the last layer being applied on the parts. As you might see, there is one different one. So one is made with a twill weave. Uh, leave a comment below to make you guess how this one was made. Uh, I might do it in a separate video to show you how it was done. So this one. Um, and then um, you can just enjoy your ring holder being finished so the finish isn't that important it's just a cool topic to do and try the chopped fibers to see if i can get re good results and learn from that so if you like this video make sure to subscribe leave a like and comment down below more videos are coming so um, i see you guys in the next one thanks for watching